demand zones on day trading time frames. So can I plot, is the question, can I plot my uh, supply zones on one hour, 15 minute, five minute, you know, time frames, and will they work? And really the answer is, drum roll please, yes. But, there is a big but, there is some things that you need to consider um, when you're looking at intraday time frames. One of them is pretty much basically the time frame significance. So, um, intraday traders uh, will generally observe um, daily time frame levels, right? And daily time frame traders do not really observe intraday uh, charts and levels because they see it as noise. So you've got to think about the forex market and how much supply and demand goes through or is 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 is, uh, is transacted on a on a price chart throughout a certain time frame. So on a daily, it's obviously going to be around. You know, uh, a lot more supply and demand is going to go through the market and is printed in the market and is moving the market than, for example, a five-minute chart. Right. So it's obvious that a daily time frame is going to have way more significance, going to be a lot more powerful when it comes to, um, you know, plotting the zone and understanding why there was demand or supply there. The markets are also manipulated, uh, a lot more manipulated on lower time frames. So what you see on the lower time frames is, um, you know, I mean, this kind of gets into advanced stuff, but things like uh, the, the, the financial institutions avoiding slippage, um, and basically stop hunting and, and searching for liquidity. Yeah. So, um, you know, the, the, the higher time frames are a lot more significant. And really to kind of illustrate, you know, the point is when you look at this price chart and you're looking at, for example, you know, these, these demand zones, all you're getting is, you know, is five minutes of demand. And I'm not saying, I'm not showing this to basically show why this fails, but it's just a, an, a you know, to, to look at, you know, because traders will look at, you know, rally based drop, drop based rally. By the way, I don't um, subscribe to that uh, that theory, um, you know, uh, and they would plot their, their levels of, you know, demand, for example, um, on a five minute chart and then wonder why it doesn't work. I'm not saying it doesn't, whether it does or it doesn't. There are certain zones and I'm going to maybe show you at the end, um, you know, if I was trading these uh, supply and demand zones on a lower time frame, which ones I would actually look to trade. But, um, you know, you've only got five minutes of, of demand coming into the market. This may represent only maybe, you know, 10, 15, 20 pips. This may only represent maybe about 20, 30 pips. Why is that significant when you look when you're looking at, you know, an exchange rate? You know, why is that significant? Why is that five minute, you know, what was it rally base rally, you know, demand zone significant in any way, shape or form? So, again, looking at the bigger picture and understanding the bigger picture. Yeah, um, is is really what you should I'll say. I can't say that you should, but, you know, what I look at. Yeah, and it's a lot more significant the higher the dailies and the weeklies. And I understand why traders, you know, look for intraday because they want, you know, a lot more trades. But um, one of the things that we need to do, right, is define um, supply and demand on a candlestick price chart. So um, I spoke about rally based drop, drop based rally, and um, well that doesn't really tell me much yeah in a sense that and believe me i've watched the videos what makes sense to me is this right is higher highs and higher lows h h h um h h h l higher highs higher lows and lower highs and lower lows yeah so let's for example um define this so what we're looking for is strong area of demand now this is a price chart and this is obviously you know, price, and this is time. Then, and this was, for example, zero. Why right, it started at absolute zero. Then, we've definitely got demand here. Yeah, 100% got demand here. And there was strong demand because buyers came into the market and pushing prices up. Then all of a sudden, you know, demand starts to wane. Yeah, this now becomes an expensive area once prices start to pull back. Yeah, there's no really demand at that price, which price may be something like 10, for example. Yeah, whatever it is, 10 pounds, $10, etc. right? So this now becomes 
an expensive area because buyers yeah, are no longer willing to push prices higher. This was a bargain area. Yeah, strong demand came in because you can it's proven by what price did at that price zone. Now, once we're in a in a, in a between a bargain area and an expensive area, we know that this is obviously a strong area of demand. Now, if prices make a new high like that and they push past this previous expensive price, then this has to be a bargain again. This has to be a bargain because buyers were buying and buying and buying up until the point where there was, you know, 10 pounds was previously, you know, expensive, but buyers still decided that this is an absolute bargain or well, still a bargain anyway, and continued to buy and push prices higher. So if prices were a bargain here, past this expensive here area and this expensive price, what do you think this is? This isn't. This is. This is. This is Black Friday. You know, this is uh, January sales, for example. This is uh, you know, um, 80, 90 percent off, if you know what I mean. And it's just how it goes, right? So higher highs and higher lows, and you have to wait for price to prove the higher high. Yeah. So this movement here, yeah, is what we define. Yeah, this area here is defined as. You know where demand is this is demand this is you know the strongest area of demand whereas if you have for example a move that does something like this right high low for example I say low but you know an expensive area bargain area expensive area and then you get a bit of demand but it doesn't really pull you know it doesn't really go past that expensive area it starts to you know drift away etc then could this considered be considered demand? Of course it's demand, but is it a strong area of demand? That's the question. This is the question. Is it a strong area of demand? And the answer, my answer would be, well, no, it can't be strong, can't be that strong because buyers were still not willing to buy at that price zone, yeah? This was still considered expensive and when prices go into a ranging market, that's pretty much what expensive is, yeah? Or cheap is cheap or a bargain price yeah proven by the market and the same thing for lower highs and lower lows it's exactly the same thing lower highs lower lows are what we would consider areas of supply yeah and the strongest areas of supply are when prices you know break through a potential area of demand yeah, so it's basically the same exact principles. Now, how's that represented on a price chart? Now, this is represented on a price chart. We're doing at higher highs, higher lows. Um, from a daily time frame perspective, what you're looking at is this: is you know that move there, and you're looking for a bearish candle, and then you're looking for another bullish candlestick. As you guys can see, this represents higher highs and higher lows. So high, low, and then a new high. So this area now becomes an area of demand at some point, yeah? So this is, would be demand. Now on a lower time frame, yeah? So this is obviously, you know, if we go down to the, to the hourly time frame, this whole move up would be made up of 24 bullish and bearish candles, obviously more uh, bullish candles than bearish candles, um, making obviously new highs, um, or at least a, a move up, etc. And then you've got obviously this pullback would be more bearish candles than bullish candles and vice versa. So at every intraday, you know, um, uh, time frame candlesticks, whether it's the hourly, 15 minute, five minute, this on a daily would represent um, a trend, yeah? So when we're looking at um, pullbacks and using daily time frames for our um, entries as far as understanding why we're looking at daily zones, I'm taking advantage of pretty much, the daily time frame takes advantage of all intraday 
trending environments. And as we know, this is has to be, you know, the area that we want to get um, long on. Yeah. Now imagine this. Yeah. Now this is now a let's say for example, this isn't a daily time frame. This is now the one hour time frame. Yeah, it's the one hour. So if we're now going down into um, you know maybe something like the uh, the five minute time frames, right, or the one minute time frame, for example, you're going to have sixty candles, yeah, within this hourly time frame here. Yeah, or if you're doing a ten minute time frame, then obviously you're going to have you know uh, six candles, etc. Right, we're going to make up this move up, this move down, this move up. Right now. Again, the question you have to ask yourself is, is six 10-minute candles, yeah, a six 10-minute candles within this hourly time frame enough, uh, and six here, and uh, sorry, yeah, and then six here, and then six here, is that enough for, to make up, you know, any kind of major and significant demand? How much demand is going through being made up so six 10 minute candles yeah four five six however it is done that for me is not significant enough for a trend yeah um like i said hourly time frame traders you have to look down on the lower time frames in order to understand you know what what um uh, uh how much uh, supply or demand is being uh, produced volume wise within this higher high higher low whereas on a daily time frame you know that you've got the whole day's volume you've got all the one hour traders all the four hour traders all the 10 minute traders etc you've got the whole day so this is why this is you know the, the the higher time frames are more significant and more powerful when it comes to understanding um time frames so obviously the lower that you go and let's go back to for example the uh previous slide yeah when you when we look at the uh oh, a bit too far yeah when we go back to this and we look at the euro dollar on, on a five minute time frame yeah what you're actually seeing in you know this area and if that is you know as, as traders you know put a drop base rally so I should say you know rally base rally rate base rally etc right which I don't subscribe to that um, that method of thinking but if this is higher highs and higher lows yeah and this is a but this is a five minute chart is there any wonder why something like this doesn't work out because all you've really got on a micro trend level are just one minute traders if this was an hourly time frame it would you know probably be the same thing everybody looks at daily time frame charts not every not you know not daily time frame traders yeah are, are not looking at and weekly time frame traders the higher time frame traders are not looking at uh you know the lower time frames they just look at that as a uh, noise and mess and uh, you're just not going to get the volume that you do now is there a way to trade lower time frames? And if I were, and zones, and if I was trading lower time frame zones, um, this these two um, uh, ways of trading lower time frame zones are the only way that I would. Right, and I'm going to give you guys um, give you guys something to uh, to have a look at. Right, so let's look at, for example, demand zones. So let's go create a demand zone. Yeah, yeah there and then let's say for example we've got strong demand strong demand right there yeah now this becomes our demand zone right there now this is represented for example on a daily time frame chart so this is the one day now if you get something similar to this on, for example, a one hour time frame chart where you've got move down, move down, and then there, 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 and that obviously is demand. 
something similar it doesn't necessarily have to be the same um it's really the same but something where you can look at to see that there is a demand zone and it's at an area or the lowest area of the daily demand zone and then you zoom in and then you see something like that that creates obviously this whole area here i should say this 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 hourly demand zone yeah and this is the swing low here and this is represents a swing low here then i would say that is an area that potentially i would trade if i were trading you know one hour demand zones or even supply zones yeah it's because the lowest area here I mean, remember this. This is this is price and time. If we're looking at you know understanding price. Let me uh, let you draw it in black. Yeah. So we've got price here. The strongest area of demand is going to be where where traders were buying in such volume that it pushed prices here. You know, up 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 above a previously potentially expensive area. So it only makes sense that. And again, this is being price. This represents, you know, five, and this represents four, and this represents maybe six, etc. Yeah, where are you? Where is the best, you know, place to buy if prices come back? Are you going to be buying at the top of the zone, or you want to be buying at the bottom of the zone? I'm not saying that prices are always going to reach there because prices don't always reach there. If you know what I mean, but. If I were to trade this daily zone, as far as you know, zoom in and look for hourly zones, this hourly zone here would have to be the absolute low of the daily zone. And then I'm looking for hourly zones before looking at obviously prices to come back within that hourly zone. And then there, because you're buying at potentially the strongest area of demand if you don't want to necessarily because this could represent for example uh this whole area could represent um you know 50 pips for example on the daily you know or 100 pips whereas this one hour zone could re maybe represent um you know maybe i don't know 15 pips for example yeah and i know traders like q entries you know you want smaller risk and, and massive rewards uh and like i said i'm not saying that you can't take these zones I'm, all i'm saying is is that marry it with the um with with the strongest area within this you know daily demand zone and then what you want to do is go down into something like the hourly and then look for those demand zones and then look to trade that if prices do come down into that area because there's pros and cons of everything prices may not prices may come to the top of this area here yeah and then bounce off here and you may never get an entry at the absolute lows. So again, there's pros and cons with everything. The second thing would be if the hourly zone that you're looking at, or you know, intraday zone, it could be a 15 minute, it could be a 10 minute, five minute. If that zone uh, was created by a news event, yeah? So you're looking at, you know, let's say for example, this is a 15 minute chart, and then you see that the uh, that that the uh, the zone is created, and you go back in time and you look at, for example, Forex Factory, and you think to yourself, "Oh, that was uh, that was created by you know some some news that was you know GDP, FOMC, um, jobs report, etc." Right, and you get this created via a massive and in, and and an important and impactful news event then i would trade this zone if i if i look back right and then i see a demand zone or a supply zone and it wasn't created by really anything other than potential profit taking then that's not an area that i would ever look for or to trade any kind of intraday zones it has to be you know an area that traders were definitely trading fundamentals and the fundamentals were the cause of the move and if you want to actually um you know go back 
you know, can go back to Forex Factory, for example, and just go back in the calendar and look for, you know, marry it with, for example, um, some uh, some price action. Go back to the day and then see when the uh, it, the price was caused, and then say, all right, then well, this was caused by this or that or whatever it is, and then you uh, you go back to your demand zone and say, all right, then that's what we want to uh, that's what we want to trade. So intraday highs and lows which basically marries up with the daily uh you know swings and highs and lows if i'm trading any intraday time frames and uh, also news as well if there is news that cause that supply or cause that demand zone then that's where i would be trading any intraday uh, supply and demand zones so never confuse activity with accomplishment and what i mean by that is just because you get more trades on a lower time frame doesn't mean that you're going to be accomplishing more than anybody who is taking daily or weekly zones as we know daily and weekly zones are the most significant and more high probability than your lower time frames so with that being said no one is better than the other but just understand that each one each higher time frame and lower time frame has pros and cons higher time frames you may have to wait a little bit more for a trade but you know it's going to be more of a significant zone and obviously on the lower time frames you're going to have supply and demand zones everywhere but you're not, never going to know which one um, is really that significant and I say never but it's going to be harder to uh, identify the more significant zones where it should be a lot easier now after watching this video